going Glasgow's way now, although here comes Jan Anderson down the outside. There's no room for him, and he's not through. Walsh and Greaves lead the way around the third and fourth turn. Robert Erickson trying to move through. And the two Scandinavians trying to make up ground, but as ever getting in each other's way, that's a common sight for Edinburgh. Jan Anderson blocking his partner there by switching to the inside. And the Tigers are away. They're going to be six up after this race. And it's all gone wrong for Edinburgh. Gating is all important. We really haven't seen any passing at all. And suddenly the Tigers have found their gating skills. A late burst finally managed to get past his partner, but another 5 1 to the Tigers, and it's one way traffic. Rear run then, James Greaves on his own in between Palmer and Pegler, and Palmer has made the best start again as he did the first time. Greaves tries to cut back under him, he's not there. Palmer leads down the back straight. Greaves will try and drive inside him. Palmer sticking to the line. Leads out through the end of the first lap. Greaves trying to go wide this time, get some drive. Not far away. Hard into that third corner on the outside of Palmer. Could go around him here. Palmer just hangs on. Good stuff. Greaves again swinging wide and he's gone around him there, I think. Palmer trying to hold it tight and he just locked up slightly. Greaves has gone to the front. Fine riding by Greaves. He's away now, I think. He's going to share it, make up for the loss of David Nagel. Good win for James Greaves. He'll be very pleased about that one. The inside gate at Santorin's Fab. Next to him, James Greaves. Mark Thorpe comes in to replace Bo Haddock in heat number eight. He's in the white helmet. And an outside gate, it's Mike Farrier, Tiger's, Tiger's American guest. From the start, it looks like Mark Thorpe for Anton's Fab. Mike Faria coming around the outside and I think he might know to the front down the back straight. Excellent first two events from Faria. He leads the way. Top second and James Greaves trying to put pressure on Anton Spab in the race for third. I think Greaves has gone round the young check here. And indeed James does move straight to third and I think he's going to come in. Mark Thorpe into second. Splendid riding from James Greaves. Although Thorpe will fight back I'm sure. Stuff from James Greaves and he's still in second place. Just possibly caught Mark Thorpe asleep there. Coming out the second bend, but anyway, James is into second place now. And pulling away from the man who's in the Intercontinental Final of the World Championships, Mark Thorpe. Up front, Mike Faria, miles clear. He's, he's been superb so far tonight, doing a good job for the Tigers. Taylor CK, James Gates second. Mark Thorpe, taken from the back by both the Tigers, finishes third.
Our inside gate it's Dean Barker. Next to Dean it's James Greaves. And in gate three, thankfully in the rear end, it's hopefully none the worst for his tumble. It's Darren Shand. Like Dean Parker and Darren Shand to get the quickest starts. James Gibbs is inside Shand around the, the second turn and into second place. But it's Barker who leads the way. He fancy if James could get on terms and put some pressure on Barker, he might have a wee chance. He's certainly not looking at all, but he's comfortable with Barker tonight. And James has caught him already. Barker looking over his shoulder, Greaves on the outside. Winding it on right round the outside of Dean Barker and he's through into the lead. Dean Barker and James Greaves. Barker cuts back underneath him in the second bend, but I think Greaves is still in front. And it's Greaves that leads it, Barker. In second place. Shan Mulley behind a 3 3 and a fantastic result for the Tigers in this race. Given the yes, but also was injured. And was excluded, sorry. And James Greaves, a brilliant ride from him there, taking one of the best riders in the league from the back. James Greaves goes off the inside in green for Glasgow. Lee Conklin off gate two in blue, Sheffield. Gate three in yellow and black, it's Newport, Scott Smith. And off the outside in red, Paul Thorpe of the Hull Vikings. And remember, at the end of 16 heats, half the teams go out. Half the other half go through to the final stages. And it's a good start there for Scott Smith once again. And Lee Conklin's made a good start for the Sheffield Tigers. And look at this young man, Lee Conklin, who only 10 days ago was taken to hospital with suspected neck and back injuries. He's showing great courage. He's made a good start. And Sheffield could be heading for three points here with Newport second, Scott Smith, James Greaves third, Paul Thorpe of Hull battling away. It's a close one, this. And Lee Conklin, the 17-year-old, looking good. James Greaves of uh, Glasgow is trying to challenge him. And at the halfway stage of this race, Lee Conklin looking good. He is. He's the sensation of Sheffield at the moment. Around the outside, a big blast there from James Greaves. Conklin left a gap down the fence there. Greaves had made a big run. Now Conklin's back in second place. Can he just hang on to that, Nigel? Into the final lap they go, and I can tell you that Scott Smith's going to try and go underneath Lee Conklin here. And it's a fascinating battle with Hull at the back. Newport third, Smith has taken Lee Conklin on the inside. He'll take him wide. Is Conklin going to retake him outside? Greaves the winner, and it's down to second place as well. That was brilliant speedway. And uh, all we can tell you is that Hull's Paul Thorpe was out of that one at the back. And Scott Smith and Lee Conklin and James Greaves were in the thick of a real battle. The riders settled down now for the start of heat number two. And it looks like the two monarchs get the quickest gates. And it's Ericsson who hits the front. James Greaves coming in the outside of Lawrence here to try and move into second place. But Lawrence is fighting a hard inside line. I think James has just gone round him. Well clear at this stage. James Gibbs in second place. Mickey Pell at the back, but well Robert Harrison stopped just as Mike said his bike was a bit unreliable. He slowed right down the back straight. He's underway again now. I think he's stopping again. So Mickey Pell now trying to move up and put pressure on Lawrence Sayer in second place. Mickey coming around the outside. Lawrence will have to keep going if he's going to hold on to that second place. Mick Pell again in the outside line. I think he's gone round the young monarch here. Here fights back though. But Powell's moving around the outside. Certainly didn't expect Mickey Pell to beat Lawrence here around Shawfield. But he's riding a wider line, Lawrence here on the inside's not going to make it. James Greaves wins it. <laughs> An inside gate is reserved replacement, Alan Mulgridge, who's Coming in for the out-of-touch, Paul Whitaker. The next talent in gate number two, it's James Greaves. Mikael Thurnberg goes off gate number three and outside, Sean Courtney. None of these riders have won a race so far tonight, so 
At least one of them thinks it's going to improve. trying to get around here outside in the first turn and I think he's made it. James Dean's also fighting his way through. Down the back straight, he's coming around Mortgage into second place behind his partner. Shot on the inside, James will take the outside line, you fancy. And you put your money on these two, team riding this one out for a 5-1. Sean Courtney, a very sensible rider, he's looking for his younger partner. But Alan Mortgage in third place is on. 100% try he won't give up. But Mogo's just too far behind at the moment to make a challenge, although Sean Courtney goes wide there. You think James Dean would have been wise to wait for his partner in this one, but he seems to be bashing on regardless. Although Sean Courtney's not really under any pressure from Alan Mogridge. It's going to be a comfortable 5-1 for the Tiger. James Dean's continuing his recent run of four and he wins it. James Greaves on the outside, he goes for Glasgow because they have the rider replacement operating for Shane Bowes. So Stead and Powell well away, Phil Jeffrey a terrible start, Gary Stead's gone to the front. Jeeves Greaves driving down the back straight, he may pass Stead here, He's certainly going quickly James Greaves. He has gone round the outside of Gary Stead, He certainly got some speed in that bike. Stead got in big trouble there and made life awkward for Mick Powell as well, so Mick's got a lot of ground to make up there. Ooh, Stead's left the line there dramatically and Powell closing in. Now Mick Powell blasting around the outside. Slap. Gary Stead hanging on grimly to that second place. Powell very wide that time, I think that may be too wide. Still got a chance as they get to the final corner. Cutting to the inside, oh he's got in terrible trouble. So James Greaves gets a win he'll be very happy with. Fourteen brings out Mick Poole's tactical substitute for Oxford Cheetahs. He partners David Smart. They're up against the pairing of Glasgow's pairing Jesper Olsen and James Greaves. Glasgow ahead by eight points, 43 to 35, with three heats left. The last two having been shared, three points apiece. goes up and it's Jesper Olsen 
from Mickpool. Mickpool now leads and down the right side. Jesper Olsen making a strong challenge up the inside. Into the third corner, Jesper Olsen leads. James Grease comes into third place. David Smart's been disappointing tonight for Oxford. Still Jesper Olsen leads, you never know with Jesper. Mickpool starting to challenge Jesper Olsen again for first place. James Grease also not too far behind. Oh, and Jesper starts to lock up. Mickpool coming down the outside now. And James Greaves, oh, and there's a collision between Greaves and Poole. The red exclusion light goes on. What did you see in that, Hugh? I think that would uh, have to go down to James Greaves' fault there, and I suspect that the referee will decide that James was the cause of that stoppage and exclude him. In fact, there's no, no light on yet that I can see. Uh, personally, I don't think James Greaves touched him. I think he just came off. Um, no, there's a, a little bit of controversy here. Exchanging a few words, you. Yes, uh, politely. Uh, um, yes, we'll say that, will we? Uh, not so politely now. Oh, <laughs> oh and there's a little bit of trouble here, Hugh. <laughs> Well, I didn't know Frank Bruno rode for Glasgow. Or and a fight breaks out now between Greaves and Mick Poole. I thought we'd paid to see Speedway and not boxing, Cammy. Well, in the old days, it used to be quite a common thing this would happen. Riders would have a little set two. And round two might be about to start. <laughs> <laughs> well, pillowcases at dawn. Well, that really was very dramatic. In a way, you know, it's not good for the sport, but in another way, the crowd love it, don't they? Yes, we can hear how much they love it. 